ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. Um, today is October 28th. That means that we are on a 28 or episode 28 of Invertober. We are live streaming every single night of October and it has been an absolute blast. There are about three days left. Oh, um, tomorrow, Saturday, because I have a Halloween party to go to, uh, we are going to be live streaming earlier than 10. We're going to be live streaming around 6. Yeah. Yep. We'll be starting our live stream tomorrow around 6, uh, spreading Death's Head Sphinx Moths. Just so that you guys know, I will be changing it on the Nature Journaling candle calendar too. But tomorrow we're going to be live streaming at 6. That just helps me out um, so that I uh, can go to a Halloween party. Yay! Oh, Halloween's pretty exciting. So... <clears throat> um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, um, and checking out my, and checking out this stream. Today we are doing an ink line drawing of some, of an insect that we have sketched previously. So we're not going to be looking at it under the microscope, but we are going to be looking at the sketch that I made of it. So, this is a tree hopper in the family Membracity. Um, tree hoppers are... Um, hemipterans. They are true bugs, which means they do have a piercing and sucking mouth part. They are plant eaters, so they are what we call phytophagous. They are not predatory. They don't eat other insects. They don't even, um, they wouldn't even, um, drink off of each other, really. They only drink off of plants. Um, let's see... Tree hoppers are generally known for having a large, um, expanded pronotum. All right. So this piece that comes all the way up here and gives it its horn and comes all the way back here and protects its wings, that is all the first segment of the thorax. <laughs> that is an expansion of the pronotum that gives it this really, really cool horn and this, um, expansion over the wings to protect um, to protect the wings and all. Now, many true bugs, because they are hemipterans, will have hemiolytra, or wings that are half membranous and half more like tegmina. They're kind of, like, leathery. Um, but tree hoppers, you can see they've got, um, they have wing veins on both their front and their hind wings. Um, all right, the, um, the Phillies game just got tied 5-5. Five, five. I am, um, I'm living it through some of my texts that I'm getting. So, here's my thought for today. Um, depending on who, who joins us and for how long they join us, we might just be doing this one insect, and then I might be heading back to my, um, to my World Series party that is happening just around the corner. But I definitely wanted to come back here and, um, and sketch with you because I've only missed one day this entire month, and I would hate to miss another day right here at the very, very end. So we are going to start getting this done. Um, it's difficult to decide where exactly I want to start on this one because these lines are very smooth and I almost don't want to start there. I almost want to start... We're going to start on the legs. Yeah, that's where we're going to start. Mm, we'll start... We're actually going to start right here at the head because I think that these lines are a little bit shorter. They'll help me get my pen on the paper. Um, it won't stress me out as much. You know, sometimes we gotta start where we are feeling most comfortable. So that's the outline of our head. Our tree hopper does have ocelli, so that's one of its ocelli. Um, it has large compound eyes that are very circular, and as you know, I love to cross hatch inside of the eye. It's gonna make it, give it that appearance that it has all of those facets. All right, and then, um, 
we have our antenna right here. Now, um, the antenna on a lot of hoppers, they look more like a little hair. Um, it, they don't appear segmented, although when you do zoom in, they do have multiple segments. But they are very thin, and it just kind of looks like a hair. So we're just going to put that there. Um, all right, we're going to go for this pronotum now. Alright, so I've got this figured out here. Oh, good morning, Chaos. Welcome. I am doing an ink line drawing of this tree hopper here. And I'm pretty excited. I really like this sketch, and it fits all under the screen at one place. So you guys get to watch the progression on this guy. Um, now, tree hoppers are known for having this really big expanded pronotum that kind of becomes a horn going forward and then a protective layer for its wings going backward. Now because this is a hopper, um, it is going to have the ability to jump all over the place. This is a jumping leg, even though it looks more like a walking leg. It's nice and long. Um, it's going to have the ability to jump great distances. So we have the femur. Um, then we've got this guy and our tibia. Wait a minute. Okay, so so I take that back. This one's not the femur. This is actually an expanded coxy, or not expanded. That's just the coxy right here. So that's kind of our hip bone of our tree hopper. Um, took me a minute because I thought this looked like a trochanter, and then I was like, "Hey, what's the trochanter doing in between the femur and the tibia?" It's because it wasn't there. We've got coxy, and then we have the trochanter, the femur, the tibia. And then, way down here, we have three tarsal segments. Alright, so one, two, three. Um, I'm going to continue this line on this thorax back and give us our second pair of legs. So we've got the coxy coming off from the body, the trochanter that's almost like a knee, um, it's like a joint in between the coxy and the femur that helps put it on an angle. Alright, so a lot of times they're that very triangular shape. And then we have the tibia, this nice long one before our tarsal segments. And it looks like... Does it have a 322 tarsal formula? I thought they had the same number of tarsi, but my sketch has only two tarsal segments on the middle and the hind leg. And I don't remember about that about this guy, but I trust my sketch over what I remember. So we've got a coxy and a trochanter and a femur. <clears throat> All right, the femur, and then our tibia coming down in this direction. Now, the tibia on our tree hopper, it is long. It's one of those jumping legs, but also it is covered in spines. All right, so there are all of these. There are spines along the length of the tibia. I wouldn't call them tibial spurs because a lot of times spurs means that the spine is at the end of the tibia. Um, I would call them, I would call them spines, not spurs. Tibial spur, tibial spines? Yeah, that's what I would call them. All right, so we've got the front, we've got the middle. I want to make sure that I've got the rest of this body ending up here. Very good. All right, so our body comes around. And you can imagine that it goes back behind the leg, and now we've got the wing that comes around. What's the use of the big pronotum? The use of the big pronotum is, um, there's actually two on this one. The, um, 
The pronotum is a shield, so it's going to kind of guard the head, and it expands back to guard the wings. So that is like one really cool thing about the pronotum here. But secondarily, this insect likes to feed on... Um, <laughs> it likes to feed on plants that have thorns, like roses and raspberry canes and wine berries. Um, it's going to be an insect that is found on plants with thorns, so the thorn is also a camouflage for it. And when they're feeding, they feed like this. So they're standing straight up on the cane. So they really do, they can look exactly like the thorn. Now there are some, um, there are some tree hoppers where their thorn is kind of straight up. There are some tree hoppers where they've got like two coming off of the sides. Um, I think I've done that one in the past. Um, and if you look up, if you look up tree hoppers from, um, orient, uh, from, like, rainforested environments, um, equatorial countries, if you look up tree hoppers of equatorial countries, you'll actually find a lot of really, really cool insects, because all tree hoppers have some type of expanded pronotum, and you can say that all of them are expanded to protect them, number one, from um, predators and to protect their um, soft wings. Uh, so that could be said for all of them, but not all of them, you can say they use their pronotum also for camouflage, which is nifty. I was hoping to find, I believe I have another tree hopper that I even did an incline drawing of that is a different one. But... I believe it might be in an older sketchbook. It's probably in this sketchbook. Oh, there are so many of these that would be really cool to do in lines also, in ink also. It's not in this book. Darn it. What? That's all right. Um, so there are all different types of uh, tree hoppers, and you can look them up. They are super cool. All right. Now, we have these wings here, and our wings are mostly membranous. They're see-through, and they have these veins on them. So um, we're going to go ahead and get our outline done, and then we're going to go back in... And then we're going to go back in and add the wing veins. And I remember taking a little bit of extra time and getting these veins right. So that's actually one of the reasons why I was excited to get this um, tree hopper lined out was because I'm pretty sure that most of these veins are correct. And a lot of times when I'm doing wing venations on things that I don't really feel like the wing venations are like significant for the identification of the creature, um, sometimes I will just go with making it feel right. You know, making sure that it has, like, the same texture in the veins, but maybe not, um, exactly correct. But these ones, these ones are right. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. There was a, um, there was a socket that the antenna was on, so I'm gonna, I added that socket there. All right, now we have the big reveal of our tree hopper. We get to go ahead and erase all this pencil. Um, I didn't ink in the pronotum, so this line might go away, but uh, we'll still have the word there, so that'll be fine. Tarsal 
muscle segments on the hind leg. Give me a moment. It's so funny sometimes, like, what you forget to go through and do. Like, you would think that would have been top priority out down there. All right, now I'm going to go and finish some of these veins because it looks like I didn't get all the way to the edge. Make them smooth them out just a little bit. Awesome sauce. Uh, well, both myself and my significant other were over at a Phillies party, um, recently, like, a couple of moments ago, and I left him there to come here and live stream, and so I think what I'm gonna do is I got this one done actually pretty quickly, only in about 20 minutes, so we're gonna do one more, and it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter live stream today, but I wanna go watch the World Series, because my city is in it, and so... Um, you know, bugs and a social life. We try to do both. So I hope that you guys understand that I only, um, that I only really have time for the two. But, um, I'm gonna do one more, which is kind of awesome. So, this is a rove beetle. We ha they're in the family Staphylinidae. So, because it's a beetle, the order is Coleoptera and the family is Staphylinidae. Um, these antenna are clubbed antenna, so you can see there's a point here, and then it looks like they're one, two, three, four, they have a five-segmented club. Um, this is a rove beetle, so the elytra are actually pretty short, and then you can see all of the abdominal segments, right? Um, so rove beetles are known for having almost back, um, backpack-like elytra. And then their wings underneath are actually full length, except that they're folded up really tight underneath these elytra. So rove beetles can fly, even though when you're looking at them, they doesn't even look like they have wings. But their wings are just very, very nicely secured. You're right, I might hear the city roar. I might hear the city roar. Um, is ba Chaos wants to know if baseball is that fun? Um, you know, the, there is not a lot of ball movement in baseball, but there is a good amount of strategy. And generally, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to baseball, but the World Series is kind of a big deal. And I like to celebrate it with my significant other. Even if I didn't grow up in the Philadelphia region. Alright, so I have my two compound eyes on either side. Um, I'm going to give our clubbed antenna here. Our first segment of the antenna, that's our scape. And it looks like the scape is actually a fairly large segment here. Um, our pedestal is smaller and also round, but then after the pedestal, all of the other segments, they're the flagellum, and they are um, sharp segments. So we've got that first one taken care of. You can see what I mean by sharp. They have all their angulate, and you can see them kind of poking out individually, whereas the first two segments are rounded. All right. 
for the economy. And you know what? I, um... They actually just sh sent me a video, and I was in one of the commercials, like, during a commercial break. I was in one of the commercials on the World Series here in um, Philadelphia, and that was kind of exciting. Um, Fox 29, the news station that I've been on a handful of times now, chose one of my clips um, that they put into their, like, Fox 29 commercial. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And so, not only do I want to watch baseball, but I want to be there if uh, they show my face again. Because that's kind of cool. Alright, so our Rove Beetle has two mandibles, There, he has chewing mouth parts, and they were kind of overlapping each other, and so when I sketched mine, instead of opening them back up, because I wasn't exactly sure how they would sit if they were open, so I sketched them the exact same way that the Rove Beetle had them sitting, which was just with them crossed like that. Chaos grew up playing football. Oh, congratulations. Your club won today. I mean, that, I know um, soccer or uh, football is a, is a huge sport over in, um, over where you guys are, over in Europe. I haven't, I don't watch as much soccer as I watch some other sports. Ah, uh, football. <laughs> Playing is always more fun than watching, true. I, um, I actually played, I played a good amount of baseball with, like, the kids next door growing up, um, but my sport, I actually played basketball in high school, so basketball was more my sport for playing, but... All right, we've got this pronotum. <clears throat> this pronotum is cool because it has these humoral... Not humoral edges. It has these edges on the front of the pronotum that kind of point forward. Um, that's a that's a unique shape for our pronotum. Now I do have a memory of this rove beetle being kind of hairy or kind of fluffy, and I do have a series of hairs around the edges of my pronotum, but I don't really want. I've been thinking about it, and I don't know if I really want to um, add those hairs with my pen because I would want to do them with a with a thinner line than this pen is going to give me. Um, and I am waiting on an order of pens that are going to help me out with that. But these ones along the edge of the tibia, I do believe these ones are a little bit thicker. So I can come in and add some of those ones I'd be happy with. But these ones that are going to be crossing this line, I'm going to wait on those. All right, so we've got the front half of our friend here. We're going to be moving on to the middle legs and these um, elytra. Um, this right here is the humeral angle. This angle on the front of the elytra. <laughs> uh, we like to call that edge over there the humerus. So you can describe it, if you, were, if you wanted to describe the upper portions of the elytra, you could say the humerus. Um, and if you were wanted to talk about the, this angle here, like if it's pointed or if it's rounded, you would call it the humeral angle. Bonus bug facts for the win. <clears throat> All right, so elytra, elytra, right here in the middle, that big triangle, that is our scutellum. We are right back after you in women's. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, and so that's definitely something that I, you know, it's definitely a sport that I could, that I could get behind and watch. All right, let's see. I didn't count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So it looks like our Rove Beetle has a five, five, five tarsal formula. And then we have these abdominal, um, these abdominal segments. It looks like she's got one, two, three, four, five, six abdominal, um, segments. I'm going to do each, I'm going to sketch each one of them individually because um, we want to make sure that they are kind of stacking into one another a little bit, but you want to make it kind of a gentle stack. It's not like a, a wasp where they're going to be super angulate. But the abdomen does get kind of smaller and smaller. There we go. All right, so we got all the way down to the bottom. Now, there is a coloration on this rove beetle that goes, and I might just put it in darker pencil and then try and try to leave it when I'm when I'm erasing. The color on this guy goes kind of like this, where these areas are darker, and then it's got, man. I'm going to have to come back and do a little bit of shading with pen on this guy. Oh, and we can also do the cross-hatching in the eyes. When you just do one, it looks like a pirate. So cool. I was a pitcher in softball, number one singles on our high school tennis team. I got to tackle my algebra teacher in flag football. <laughs> oh, that's great. All three teams. So, Nancy, you played on in softball, in algebra, or in softball, in tennis, and in flag football. That's fun. All right, I'm going to go in here and erase our pencil lines. I was a goalie in, fo in football back when I was in school. Also played volleyball. Very cool. Yeah, the only sport I played, um, the only real sport I played in high school was basketball. Um, but I did, I, I was in the marching band. Oh, hey, I forgot this li little line here. So sometimes you realize lines you need after you erase the pencil. Right here in between the, the compound eye and the rest, there was a little line there that I needed. I think the antenna look a lot better in pen. In pen. The, um, they were a little bit confused, I think, in the pencil. And I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do about all of this really cool pencil in the in the body because uh, I'm going to get these because I got this spray on this tibia. I'm going to get this tibia. I'm just going to do it. We're going to do it. If I like it enough that I don't want to erase it, that means that it's worth something. And it, it's this series of hairs that goes all the way around the edge of the pronotum. I 
And then if we're going to be going ahead and doing it. Because on these, um, on the elytra, there were also these kind of lighter spots on either side, and there was some shading in here to show that, but I hadn't gotten into it in pen, and I think that this is going to make it look better. Cool. All right, and then we're going to come in down here, and we're going to keep our keep our thing going we're gonna go ahead and give this darkened region here on these two segments and then we're gonna add the hairs on the ends of these abdominal tergites and then we'll go ahead and finish erasing this pencil way better. That makes me a lot happier. The ink really brings out the lines. Yes, exactly. That's why I want to do it in ink and then um, erase all of the pencil underneath. My favorite part is erasing the pencil underneath to see kind of where the true ink lines are. Um, this has been a whole lot of fun kind of finishing these. Um, let's see. And, um, when I then transfer this image over into a computer, I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to use these really crisp lines easier and turn them digital than it is to turn the pencil lines digital. Um, they are a little bit like fuzzier and so the image doesn't come out as crisp. But if you have solid lines like this when you do with pen, um, when you digitalize it, the lines become very, very crisp. And you can go in and fix it and you can even, um, it, uh, you can even kind of widen the lines a little bit with a tool um, or fix little minor errors. So we'll be, we'll be going ahead and doing that too. Look at how cute he is. Yay. Another one ready for a coloring book. Exactly. And you know what? I do have a whole bunch of them now. So we are getting ready to actually get going because we have like the roach and we have this crate. We have the glorious jewel scarab that we did. Um, let's see. Which other ones are in ink? Oh, we did this mantis fly. That one we did, uh, I think that was one of the first ones that we did. I want to do this one. I want to do the crawling water bug. I think that this will be a very simple line drawing, but it'll be, um, I wanted to wait until I had my better kind of thin pens so that I could get some of the punctations and the designs in the pronotum. So that's why you haven't seen that one just yet. We did the clown beetle, the hysterid, and we did the whole um, th the body in pen, but I left all of my notes and stuff in pencil. Um, that one is awesome, and there were a couple areas where I feel like I had to go back over and maybe erase some of the pencil up here, but um, this one is awesome. Yeah, so I think that this coloring book is going to be kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of fun. 
Oh, and our lace bug. This one is going to be fun for people to color, even though in real life, this one is, you know, white or clear. Um, but I feel like with all of the spots and the designs and stuff, the lace bug is going to be really fun to color. I also think that it would be, uh, it's almost mandala-like, um, with, like, the dots and the rectangles and the spaces and stuff. And, um, I wonder what it'll look like if we, like, change all of the colors of the dots and things like that. It'll be, it'll be a fun one to play with. And then, of course, the ambush bug. He's one of my favorites. And we did him laterally and dorsally, but I only did him in pen, um, laterally. And I've been considering doing um doing the dorsal view but it's another one of those kind of shade ones that i would have to touch up just a little bit yeah so that's some of the ones that we've done ink lines of but that's not even all of them so i would have to go back and count and see how many we had but uh yep 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 that's what's happening <laughs> so it has been about 40 minutes it's not my shortest live stream i promise you um but i am live streaming every day of the month so i don't feel too horrible if um if we only have one or two people around and i um and i make it just a little bit shorter i will be back tomorrow um so Tomorrow, I am going to be live streaming earlier than the 10 p.m. time slot, um, 10 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to be live streaming. I'm hoping to start around 6 p.m. It might be like 6.10, um, but I'm hoping to start my live stream tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is so that I can go to a Halloween party. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, let's see. What else? I think that's the only real-time change that we have to know about right at the moment. Um, we are live streaming every single day of the month, but there are only three more days left. Tomorrow, we're going to be spreading Death's Head Sphinx Moths, but we might also um, pin a handful of other insects because I have insects that I collected this summer that I still haven't pinned yet. So I'm a little bit behind with that. Um, so we might do a little, we might do some of my own insects too. We'll see. Uh, Sunday, we're going to be doing a whole new insect, um, illustration uh from underneath the microscope i'm still deciding what we're sketching so if you come early on sunday or um if you come just a couple minutes before the live stream on sunday or in the first five couple of minutes um you can help me decide <laughs> what we're gonna be sketching on sunday um my collection is open and available to sketch whatever we like um, and a lot of times, if I don't have what people would like to sketch, I can find it by the next week. Like this week, we sketched, um, this Thursday, we sketched a stone centipede because people had kept asking for it. Um, Halloween is a fun holiday. Exactly. You could have played as Libero in Volleyball Nancy. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, you're right. The hairs were definitely needed, and that's why I was going back and forth about adding them, but you know what? I think I made the right choice doing them, um, and the shading on the, um, and the shading on the elytra, although there's a part, there's a part of here, so I did the lines in this direction, and then when I was doing it in pencil, I did the other lines in this direction, so they were symmetrical. When I did it in pen, I thought that it might look better if all the lines were going in the same direction, and now I regret it. I wish that I had um, done the lines um, opposite of one another, rather than all being the same, kind of symmetrically. Um, but, uh, now I know that for the future, so the next time I won't do that. And those lines will be easy enough to fix on the, um, those lines will actually be really easy to fix digitally if I want to do that. So, thank you so much for being so very understanding of, um, 
of all of the things. So, um, we're gonna be closing out for we're gonna be closing out for the day so that I can go ahead and um, finish up uh, finish up the game with my significant other. And thank you so much for hanging out, sketching or doing the ink line drawing of our tree hopper and of the rove beetle, and chatting sports in the chat box. I wouldn't have thought that I'd ever have a live stream where we chatted a little bit of sports, but um, thank you. Uh, that's fun. Oh, wait. My... Where did the button go? The, um... My logo is gone! Weird. All right. Well, um, uh, keep in mind that I do out school and I teach students ages five to eight, nine to 12. I have students from all over the world. If you have, know an individual who really loves bugs and wants to be, um, and wants to learn about a new insect every single day of the week or every once a week, Nah, every single week. <laughs> um, they can hang out with me. We do illustration, so I walk kids through every single step of sketching an insect. Or we do weekly insect studies where we do more an overview of life histories and how they interact with others and where they live and what they eat and those types of things. Um, keep please um, please subscribe to my channel. All right. Um, if you haven't already, there's also a little um, bell notification uh, that if you click it, you'll. Uh, be notified when I go live, especially when I random when I decide to you know change up the time and be spontaneous a little bit. Uh, you'll get a notification. Um, there, right about there, is my PayPal link. Um, and this was this was a short one, so I understand yes or no, but I always like to offer it. Um, uh, feel free to drop me a couple of dollars if you really enjoyed today's class. If you um, if you think you're gonna take any of the knowledge you learned um, to somewhere else, you know all of those things. Just keep me in mind. I super appreciate it. Um, let's see. And if you're looking for me on social media and you can't find me, um, be, that might be because you're looking for at Insectopia and not at Insectopia 2015. You need to make sure you put in those numbers right there so that you can find me. Uh, all right. Have a wonderful day, Chaos. Have a great night, Nancy. I hope you both, I, I hope to see you around again. And, um, have a great day. Stay buggy.